First put your mop just inside the door, and next put your carry-all tray on the counter. You're always going to start cleaning the kitchen from the same spot, and that spot is to the right of the sink. Now it's time to get dressed, so let's put on our apron first. A smart way to put on the apron is to put it on backwards. That way you can see the, yourself tying the bow, which is a little bit easier than trying to do it you know, behind you. When you get it tied, just pull it around. Now you've got it into place. This is a good time to check and make sure that you have your little tools. Remember, you've got a toothbrush, you've got a scraper, and down here is the razor, and they're all where they belong. You need a few cleaning cloths. Take some of them out of your tray and put them into your apron pocket. And you notice I didn't say stuff them in your apron pocket, but put them in there in a nice, organized way so you can pull them out one at a time when you're using them to clean the kitchen. You remember you've got two plastic lined pockets. The first one is to carry your white pad in. Your white pad will quickly be wet and the plastic will keep you from being wet also. And the other one is for debris, you probably remember. Now, red juice, check to make sure it's tight, and then put it on the right side as long as you're right-handed. Put it on the left side if you're left-handed. Set your blue juice in place also. So, now we've got our apron is full, and we need a couple of tools that go in the back pocket. One of them is a whisk broom. The whisk broom comes in real handy in the kitchen, especially if it is carpeted. And finally, we need a feather duster, and put that in the second back pocket. Now, one other thing before we actually start is let's take this uh, throw rug out of here. That way it won't be in the way when ready to do the mopping. This is a good time to empty the trash also. So let's grab that. And what I'm going to do is take them outside the room and I'll leave the garbage here where I can pick it up and empty it later. And I'm going to throw the carpet or the throw rug down here where I can vacuum it late later. Take the time to make sure that it's down really flat, because sooner or later when you do get around to vacuuming it, you won't have to stop and straighten it again. You're not making work for yourself, in other words. The strategy for cleaning the kitchen, or any other room for that matter, is to work your way around the room once, never backtracking, always progressing to the right. And at the same time, you're going to be observing rule number three, and that is work from top to bottom. And we say for emphasis, always period, don't argue. And the reason for that is, is because there are no exceptions to that rule. If you don't work from top to bottom, you'll continually make work for yourself because dust and debris and even cleaning solution will drift back down onto a surface that you've already cleaned. Besides being time consuming, it's also very exasperating. It's also why we do the floor last. You can knock debris on the floor while you're cleaning it and you can pick it up when you do the floor and it makes no sense to do it any other time but last. For now, we're going to start over here to the right of the sink. And following our rule of working from top to bottom, let's first look for cobwebs up here. And there are a couple, so we'll knock those down. And there isn't really much else to clean here, but we can get the dust off of these curtains. Now we're going to clean the countertop, where we uh, the first part area of the countertop. So lift up your cleaning tray. It requires a little red juice, and it requires a cleaning cloth. And now we'll wipe it clean and dry. Did you notice how I set my red juice back in my apron without even looking? It's so automatic. Always put your tools back in the same place. I started a cleaning cloth. Instead of putting it back in my apron, I throw it over my shoulder where it's easy to grab for the next juice. Continuing on down, you need red juice and a cleaning cloth for the cupboards below. And be sure to grab for your toothbrush whenever you need it. Now, we're going to start the same thing to the right, top to bottom. The first thing that I see here are these fingerprints, and they require red juice and a cleaning cloth also. Spray with red juice. All right, and agitate now with your toothbrush to get into these little corners here that you couldn't otherwise get to. That makes the cleaning much simpler. And then wipe it clean and dry. See how easy that goes? Looks just like new. That brings us to rule four which is, if it isn't dirty, don't clean it. That actually sounds a little bit like, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. But our rule isn't really all that obvious. You know, a lot of people trying to clean those couple of fingerprints here might have sprayed this entire door, at least all of that they can reach, which takes a little bit of time, and it takes even longer still to wipe it now all clean and dry. 
Really all they wanted to do is clean those few fingerprints. So pay attention. If, if it isn't dirty, don't clean it and just get the couple of fingerprints that you need. The same goes for vertical and horizontal surfaces. Vertical surfaces don't get as dirty as horizontal surfaces. Upper shells get less dust than lower shells and the same goes for upper and lower molding. Now that we're done with the cupboard itself, let's go down to the counter here. And you know, if it weren't for counters maybe and the stove top and the floor in the kitchen, there isn't much hard work to do. So let's talk about the counter a little while. And one of the reasons that the counter is hard to clean is that there's all these things sitting on it. The way to clean the things that are on it are one, move the item away from where it was so you can reach behind it, put some red juice back there, and now clean the area that was right behind this uh, osterizer here. Now, oftentimes, you want, before you move this back, you want to clean it. And oftentimes, you can clean it just with your red juice dampened cloth. But sometimes you need to do it. I'm going to unplug it first, and then I'm going to just spray it with red juice. Let's start here and work our way down. Use the toothbrush in all these places, and then I can hardly wait to get to these all of these little buttons and get them all clean. And this really works. It's amazing how you can make this look just like new again. Okay, now everything's clean and loose. And we're going to wipe it dry. As say, it looks like you just got this when it came out of the box when your husband gave it to you for Christmas or wife, whoever. Now, see how I've put the cloth over the toothbrush here? Now, by getting down in between each of these, all of that dirt that I got loosened up, I can really get it out. Push the off button just to make sure I didn't turn it on when I was cleaning all of those little buttons. Now, put it back into place and let's clean behind the canister. Move it out, clean behind it, and I'm just going to use my red juice dampened cloth. Set it back, there's really nothing to clean of the canister itself, and use a little red juice on the counter in front of both of these items and wipe it clean and dry. All right, so following our rule, we're moving to the right. Going to come to a new set of counter here. You know how to clean a countertop by now, and you know how to clean the front of the cup cabinets below. Use your red juice and a cleaning cloth. Grab your toothbrush anytime you might need it. Now, moving right one more time, we come to a little bit more interesting stuff here on the countertop. Here's some, um, I guess they're just breadcrumbs or something. They're loose. And that means that we can kind of gather them up and drop them into our little debris pocket. And that works real well at getting rid of them. And if one or two of them fall to the floor, it's no big deal since we haven't cleaned the floor itself yet. Here comes something else. Um, I don't know what this stuff is, but my experienced eye tells me I think I want to use my white pad and a red juice. So let's spray it and then use your white pad on it. Oh, that's going to come up. Now what we're doing here is just getting it loose and in a minute we will wipe it up with our cleaning cloth. But the point I'm making here is most of this gunk is now in your white pad and not on the countertop anymore. Now most of us have this irresistible urge to walk over to the sink and rinse this out. Well, I'm sorry, you don't get to do that. That's going to waste time. No matter how yucky this thing gets, it's not going to clean any better if you rinse it. So just stick it into your uh, plastic lined pocket and leave it there. Now let's wipe the counter dry. Yeah, that came off nice and clean. And you notice every time I use this cloth, I keep putting it over my shoulder. Well, ultimately, this gets too dirty and wet and yucky for me to put it over my shoulder anymore, and I want a new cloth. When that happens, you've got a couple of choices. One is to put it behind the plastic that's in the pocket with the white pad. Your second choice, if you're still halfway close to your tray, or if you're a pretty good shot, is just kind of toss it back to your tray. Now then, take another cloth and put it over your shoulder. Now sometimes when you're cleaning around the kitchen, you come to something you need a very dry cloth for. Chrome is a good example. And if this cloth is already a little wet, well, that's not a good cloth to use. So you might want to be using two cloths sometimes. Use a very dry one to dry chrome or glass or whatever you need, and then put it here hanging out. Now then, when this one is too wet, that'll be the one that you toss over your tray, and then you can rotate this one up.